going to be well doing um, and uh, it's um, you know I still I know the Lord gave me these charts I just don't know how well I am communicating them um, it would be it would be important to me uh, if some of you just felt like well I'm just not I'm not getting that then that's now remember uh, a lot of us, um, we started this journey some time back, and um, we only had a few people on Skype at that time. This was even before the virus, I guess. And uh, we only had a few people on, um, and uh, we only had a few people showing up. So, uh, you know, some, some of you have had, you've been with it from the beginning or pretty quick in, and I, I'm sure you're probably doing fairly well, or really well, one or the other. Uh, but I guess I'm not really asking the people who haven't really uh, been, uh, let's see, we're in 22 classes, who haven't been in more than like four classes or something. All right, so uh, tonight's subject, according to the chart, is, and is this in the way? I cannot, no, no, it's not. Okay, is well-doing, all right? Now, um, last week we talked about the evildoer, and if you remember, um, that was the subject, but there were a lot of different words surrounding it, like uh, uh, speaking against you and, and uh, uh, don't do evil, uh, and they falsely accuse you and the tongue of evil and do evil and roaring lion and all that. And all of that just filters down to one thing. All of this basically is about one thing. Every chart is basically going to be about one thing. And those words around it are just going to confirm that. All right. So what was the one thing with the evildoers? This, this little guy, see, he's even... He's even kind of, I don't know, I was going to say mad. I should put a tear on his eyes because you and I are starting to get this. Um, last week it was evil do it. And all of those words pertain to one main thing, that there is an evil doer. We're not, it's not really the devil that we're talking about. It's somebody or some group of people that all of a sudden they rise up against you and they... Um, falsely accuse you and they do all this and uh and they and so all of those words were talking about just that or talking about our reaction to that well well doing is the opposite end of that spectrum well doing is not your general christian you know do do be a do gooder Neither was evildoers, here they are right there, neither are evildoers uh, your basic sinners, um, uh, false prophets. Um, they are specifically there to attack you um, and allowed by God because God wants to test where you're at in relationship to fellowship and with him and his sufferings. It's that simple. That's what's going on in them. And what's going on in us is supposed to be these things here. Okay, so we, we do have to deal with evildoers. But well-doing is also described as uh, your proper conversation. Remember, we've talked about conversation that it's not talking about your words. It's talking about the manner of life that you have, and the manner of life is well-doing. And the well-doing is that in the midst of this, going through this corridor here, uh, when you get into the red zone, <laughs> when you get into, you know, red alert, um, uh, that's when he, the evildoer, or doers, put on the pressure to br make your soul react, to make your soul lash out to make your soul be just like them make your soul prove that you're still an evildoer instead of you know with the lord uh in going through those things and 
the whole book of first peter is talking about this basic thing okay so and then the will of god what we're going to find out and i think we've already discussed uh, well doers but i just wanted to go over this one again too because they're so clear <clears throat> we will find out and it'll also be in it will link to other subjects just like they all do um, but the will of god well, I mean, just a scripture comes to my mind that that it is the will of God that with well doing you put to silence the ignorance of whatever man I can't remember what it is, but it's in First Peter, that scripture, and uh, then the soul, First Peter four nineteen, and the soul it, it's related to that because keep your soul, let allow the salvation of your soul in that moment. Uh, let your soul be saved, and we talked about that last week with David. And it was a constant, constant thing that David would um, be challenged, be unfairly treated, uh, unjust things going on, all this stuff. And uh, David would, you know, he would go through some things because you kind of have to filter it all out in the first stage here. But then by the time you get in here, you're usually either there or you're not, but that's not totally the case and um, uh, that's where the the Holy Spirit kicks in about um, the wanting to be with the Lord not denying him and um, you see that with Peter I mean I think Peter really loved the Lord um, but he got in the situation where they came in the garden and, you know, he's trying to defend the Lord. And I, I'll just tell you, the oh, I forgot to tell you, this is uh, T-shirt Wednesday, and I got my T-shirt on here. Uh, and, um, uh, and he uh, pulls out a sword, you know. Well, that's becoming an evildoer. That's reacting the way evildoers do. And the proof of that is, I mean, this see, this goes all over Peter's line. The proof of that is you go back to when Peter was uh, G talking to Jesus and then he said some good things and Jesus, you know, complimented him. And then Jesus figuring he understands him, not, not just his teaching and his actions, but understands him, begins to talk about the cross immediately, thinking, okay, you're with me. And he starts laying out how he must go and die and be unjustly treated and all this stuff. He already knows it's coming. And you should too at some juncture or junctures. And, um, and Peter jumps on Jesus to defend him, jumping on Jesus to defend him. And rebukes him basically and, and says, not so, Lord. And Jesus has to come back with, you know, treating him like an evildoer. Get behind me, Satan, for thou savoreth the things of men and not the things that be of God. Well, what does that mean? That means you shouldn't be pulling out a sword in the middle of a situation that calls for being one with the Lord. You know, that's not, that's not what, that's not, you know, that's what Peter learned and wrote this book about. Um, and, uh, and that's what happened when he, again, um, you know, he pulls out that sword and then they say, well, are you one of him? Are you with him? Are you, uh, are you uh, joined to him? Are you partakers of uh, him and this group and all that kind of stuff? And he's going, no, I don't know him, you know. And then that happened three times and three times the rooster crowed and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, and then, you know, the, the moment where Jesus looks at him and Peter looks back and is like, and that's why Peter went out and wept bitterly. Um, it wasn't because he had it together with Jesus. It was because he was, he was an evildoer at that point. He's the one who wrote all this stuff about evildoers and all this. Uh, where this is the study of the book of First Peter, by the way. <laughs> and, and so, so uh, uh, he brings up the soul more than once. Uh, throughout the book and he does it uh, in 
relationship and in conjunction with this ongoing thought of when you're going through the sufferings of Christ, this is the will of God. Now, I don't know if we'll get into it tonight, probably not, but um, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna throw that up there in a certain form and just, you know, look at the Scriptures. And, and see, all my teaching doesn't really do much good if you're not, if you haven't dug into 1 Peter and I'll put all that stuff in there so the Holy Spirit can take that and bring it up and show the truths that it that was really meant to be instead of the way many of us who were when we were in this class and first started out, uh, it just looked like really nominal teaching until you see what the Spirit of God is using or how Peter's flowing with the Spirit of God in relationship to the sufferings of Christ. And uh, but, you know, we need you need we need to know that book backwards and forwards so that when I'm running through all this, I don't have to look up every scripture. I mean, this has already taken some time and and, uh, you know, show it to you. you need to be going. Yeah, I remember where that's talking about that. And it does say that this is the will of God. And it does say you got to watch your soul. That's the will of God. And it does say evildoers are going to try to knock your soul out of kilter, which is not which which you're supposed to respond with well doing and you're going to suffer for well doing. It says that. See, it's all of that. This guy ain't going to shut up just because you're, you know, and um, and you're going to you're going to get it down into this section where you're you're through the worst of it and you're glorifying God. And and it talks about the end. And that's you have to see that because it uses different words at different times, but it's always the same thing. And then the lust of the flesh, which we talked about one time and then good works. So in First Peter, well doing good works having a right conversation, um, uh, suffering, all of those are responding correctly in the trial that's not just your everyday, you know, garden variety trial. It's you've entered a time of God wanting to see if you're going to, if you even understand the sufferings of Christ. Obviously, Peter didn't understand it you know, when they walked this earth together with Jesus. But he failed enough that he didn't just stay down and cry and whine and whatever. He said, I'm, I'm with you now. I'm ready to go through whatever, you know, just to be of one spirit with you and have to have that heart um, uh, and to have your heart worked in me and handle this the way that you handle it because you're in me now and and see that the father brings about those trials but you know we talked about them somewhere along in here a little bit that the trials always the same thing it's the work of the evildoer stirring up stuff and getting all the putting all this stuff in motion okay and again i know he's drawn like, drawn like the devil but it's not really i mean the devil can do that and it does talk about that in um, in First Peter, where he says, "The devil goeth about like a ro roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour." Well, we've always read that as um, uh, there's a devil and he attacks Christians, but Peter's not using it that way. And you have to in in those verses when he does that, you have to stay with the subject just a little while, and you'll see that. At first, it doesn't, it doesn't seem like he's saying that. And then he just nails it. And then it makes sense that everything he did say after it does. And that's pretty much Peter. That's pretty much First Peter. It's, you, you have to give your, your attention. Attention. You have to give your attention to it. It's not, oh, I'll just sit in class or I'll sit in church and osmosis will bring all this to me and it'll be all true in me or it is already true in me when you know god knows it's not if you're passive all right so um so let's go through a few scriptures um uh first peter 2 11 through 12 
<clears throat> Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, meaning we are of a different conversation, different life, a different reaction. Um, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles that, here it is, that whereas they speak evil against you, that's, it's always that. It's always in there when it comes to, to the evildoers. They're always speaking against you. Uh, and can I say, they don't always speak everything, but they have all this. Anybody know what I'm talking about, like a boiling pot? <clears throat> this boiling pot that's just, you know, boiling up with all this stuff. And, and every ounce of it is justified in our little boiling pot because the evildoer did this da 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 and we're just at, we're we're proven that our soul is not saved in that situation what meaning that christ is not coming <coughs> forth and um so <clears throat> um speak against you as evildoers that they may by your good work. So there's <clears throat> well-doing, conversation, good works. <clears throat> it's always words used about living Christ when the sufferings of Christ come. Not when the, the devil attacks you because you're such a good Christian. Not all this other stuff. It is specific to his sufferings. And that's that's what brought Peter to his knees. I mean, he looked back on his life and all the things that he did, and he was devastated. He went out and wept bitterly. We go, well, you know, da, da, da. no, 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 no. This struck him to the core, and this book proves it, but he, he got with the Lord. He figured it out. He figured out how to be with the Lord, and he figured out these things were going to come not because he was a good Christian, but they were going to come because God was testing the trial. Uh, think it not strange. Why do you think this is strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to test you? And then it goes into one of the biggest explanations of this whole thing. I'm quoting First Peter. Anyway, anyway. <clears throat> uh, uh, that they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. The day of visitation is just another word for the end down here, the gold standard when you have lived according to that life uh, in the face of the attacks of the enemy. And you've been with the Lord. Um, <clears throat> let's see. 2... 15, let's see, I've got that. So I've got something written here, and it says, uh, well doing. The rest of the verse, 215, is saying that being submitted to men who are evildoers, which he terms doing well, is God's method of dealing with the people who have no clue of lamb life. Peter uses it to mean that we live by the life of the lamb in terms of non-retaliation, but to suffer unjustly in a right spirit. All right, so that's, that's the book of Peter, First Peter, right there. Um, you know, uh, my wife listens to different things and sometimes my sharings, old sharings, and I heard something recently and <clears throat> and um, was just, you know, just realizing, kind of flashing back to my early days you know, I read Madame Guyon, and and I, I heard uh, um, certain people, a little bit of Watchman Nee, but a lot of Watchman Nee's helpers at that time read their stuff. And there was something in me, I just went, you know, the, all this stuff about suffering, this is not right. This can't be right, you know. And... Uh, uh, you know, we're, we're free and God saved us and everything's wonderful. Well, is it? I mean, look around. Well, is your life all that wonderful? You know, uh, is God pleased with it? <laughs> That's it. And uh, um, <clears throat> one of the reasons why our lives are not, aren't so wonderful is we haven't learned to 
fellowship with his sufferings. Paul talks about that, to fellowship with his sufferings. And uh, they're not just people who say, uh, well, there's virtue in suffering. I've said this, some of you know that from early on in this class. I don't see any virtue in just suffering, just purity old suffering. I don't see any virtue in it. But there is virtue in lamb suffering. Uh, look at Jesus. I mean, you know, he, he, he healed us, you know, and then, you know, they're going to go back to being sick again. He, <clears throat> he fed us, but they're going to get hungry again. He did all of those things. Um, and then, you know, people from other countries started coming in John 12 and saying, you know, we would see Jesus and the disciples are excited and they go to Jesus and say, hey, they, you know, other people from nations are wanting to see you, you're getting famous. They don't use those words, but you know, hey, this thing's going to take off. And Jesus said, and says he answered them, except I fall into the ground and die, there's not any fruit. That's not fruit. What I did there was not fruit. That's not fruit. It was a miracle, but it wasn't fruit. That's not fruit. That's not fruit. Fruit comes from a seed dying. And he's, you know, he's that seed. He's that seed, see? And if we, uh, you, if you're going to be like me in my early days, I mean, I just really resisted it. I just had kind of had a bad attitude. I didn't want to hear it. I, you know, I put down Madame Guyon and said, I won't be reading that anymore. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm sure the evildoer was, you know, living in my lap. But nonetheless, um, I was wrong. Because I didn't see the Lamb in it. I didn't see the Lord. I didn't see, I didn't see that the one thing that we all claim is the thing that did it all was the fact that He just died. He just died. But He died a right kind of death. But He died. You know, so yeah, but He rose again. But He died. You know, I mean, uh, it's like, well, what, is, what does that prove? Well, it proves that, you know, if we die, we can be raised again. No, it proves a lot more than that. It proves that, you know, through death, he destroyed him that had the power of death. That, that the, it was the death that put to death the old man. On and on and on and on and on. It was the death that did that. So much virtue in that. Well, you know, Peter didn't see that because he hadn't died yet. And Jesus talks about it and he goes, no, uh -uh. No, not so, Lord. No, that's not for us. <laughs> or that's not for you because I really love you and I don't want you to go through some horrible thing like that. Jesus, Jesus rebukes him with the harshest rebuke you can imagine because he's savoring what everybody savors. Lord, bless me. Lord, bless me. Feed me. Lord, uh, give me finances. Lord, take away any problems I have. Lord, make me comfortable. Lord, when I'm not comfortable, I'm angry. Lord, when I'm not, when I'm hungry, I, I, I get angry. Lord, when I don't, you know, we're going, I don't, I don't, your response is being just exactly in the, in the, in the sufferings of Christ that are brought for you to be with him in your response is, if you're an evildoer, unless you're going to do it in well-doing, is the same as everybody else. Yeah, it ain't no different. They all, everybody, it doesn't matter what planet you come from, doesn't matter what country, doesn't matter what um, uh, high caste or low caste, it doesn't matter. Everybody wants to be happy. Everybody wants to be comfortable. Everybody wants, well... Jesus was the Son of God, and he wasn't seeking those things out. All right. I, I would say I talk too much, but I'm supposed to. I mean, okay. So, um, 1 Peter um, 3.17, For it is better if the will of God be so. So here it is. Will of God, it is better if the will of God be so that you suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. That, um, uh, that if you suffer for well-doing, 
uh, it is better that if you're suffering in this spirit of well-doing, which is the nature of the Lamb, which is Peter not resisting what the Lord, you know, what he's going through, but saying, yeah, I'm part of it. I'm with, I'm with him. And, um, you know, when he dies, he's like, look, I, you know, we're going to hang you on a cross. Man, I'm not even worthy to be hung on a cross. If you're going to do it, hang me upside down. Well, that'll be, you know, all the blood will rush to your head. It'll be worse. I'm going to be with the Lord. We go, well, I don't, I don't want to suffer. Get me out of this, Lord. I don't like it when evildoers come around or things go wrong or I feel uncomfortable. Well, join the whole human race. But we're not of the whole human race. We're not even of. We are in it, but we're not of this world. And um, anyway, so he says, um, for Christ, so here it is, for it is better if the will of God be so that you suffer for well-doing than evil-doing. Okay, that could be anything, Randy. Why are you making it say that? Well, because of the next verse. For Christ also hath suffered once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. What did that say? He suffered by the hands of the unjust, the evil doers. He suffered by their hands that he might bring us to God. That's what it says. I mean, you know, if you're a Bible-believing Christian, not a Bible thumper, but a Bible-believing Christian, you have to look at that and go, my God, this is what's going on. He was put to death in the flesh that he might be quickened by the Spirit. No, no, listen. He was put to death in the flesh, suffering the just for the unjust in well-doing that, that he might be quickened in the spirit. It's premised on the death. And it's saying to us, you need to suffer for well, uh, suffer in well-doing, meaning in that same spirit, that same heart. Just like Jesus did when the evildoer comes around. Um, uh, for Christ, for Christ also. He's using Christ as our example, but Christ is our life. You know, I mean, it'd be difficult to do this without Christ being your life. But if he's your life, then, you know, I mean, I was saying something the other, other day. Um, you know, I could just see myself saying to a group of people, you know, what, you know, what is this life all about? And some would go, well, we're supposed to do this, and there's this, and there's that, and then. well, life is about life. Life. It's, life is just life. What you're doing, what you're doing uh, you could be doing something that's not life. You could be you. You could have given yourself to stuff that you. You know. I mean. I'm just thinking of a, you know a person that might go out and they give themselves to what their flesh really wants. I want to. I don't ever want to be poor again. I was raised in an orphanage and I don't want to be poor again and look down on and laughed at because I was an orphanage. Uh, I want to, uh, I want to become something and something respected and all this stuff. Well, that's not life. That's flesh reacting to things that you have to learn how to deal with. And if you don't, then, then you'll keep doing that all through, not r life, but existence. And you just react, just react. This will, you know, this ain't right, you know. Well, that was right, but that wasn't right. Well, <laughs> it's the that wasn't right stuff that's supposed to be the thing 
where we can come, al come along with well-doing because it's the will of God and have the right conversation and keep our soul uh, in order and suffer with Christ and glorify God and the, by doing it, by our good works, which he's not talking about good works. He's talking about this spirit. Okay. Okay. Um, First Peter 4, 1 and 2. For as much then as Christ, oh my God, are you going to say that again, buddy boy? You said it in 3, you're going to make us choke on the fact that what you're demanding or calling for, Peter, you're calling for it uh, in such a humble spirit. Um, but you're always showing us that we can't get out of this because you're saying if, if Christ did this, and you're supposed to also. Well, no, no, that's not my doctrine. Well, it is. It's Jesus's. It's the Holy Spirit. It was Peter's. It was Paul's. I don't know. Who are you looking for? Demas? <laughs> you know. Uh, for as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. There it is, see? And, and letting that flow through all of this and, and, and carry you through all the things last week when we put up the evildoer stuff, this will carry you through all of that. The whole chart of the, the uh, corridor of the sufferings of Christ, this spirit and this way and understanding of what these verses are talking about and not making them nominal verses on just do well. I'm going to do well. I'm going to I'm going to do good works. But being with the Lord in that, no matter what's in there, then that's what God's after. That's what He wants. That's what He's. That's what He seeks. He seeks that. He said, you know. He called it the will of God. Um, before and uh, let's see yeah in 215 when we read that maybe you didn't notice that but there's that little word there the will of god 215 it says for so is the will of god that with well doing you put to silence the ignorance of foolish men and foolish men here in the context will be evildoers okay will of god okay now i read three first peter 317 for it is better if the will of God be so that you suffer for well doing, being a, you know doing well doing by the Spirit of Christ, then evil doing. It's better that you would be down here with this group than up here with this group. In fact, it's really the will of God because that's the word of use in both both sentences there. So now we're in four, and he says, "For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh." Arm yourself likewise with that same mind, for he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time on this earth to the lust of men. And we went in one of the classes, we went over the, the lust of the flesh and saw that it wasn't talking about rank sin or, you know, uh, wandering eyes or, or robbing banks or... I don't even know what, what all. I don't want to know what all. You know, it's. I just do not think about what all that is. But it is. It is. Um, he's saying this mind will keep you from going off against the evil doers. It'll keep you being with Jesus through the corridor. As much as Christ suffered, you need to arm yourself. In the, with the same mind, the same exact mind of the Lamb of God, the same exact mind as the crucified one. Um, uh, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. Okay, so there it is. You shouldn't live the life of an evildoer which lives according to the lust of his flesh which is to get out of everything and to complain and to say this is unfair and well if they they misunderstood me and they misjudged me and 
this is all so, you know, horrible. No, no, not to God. What's horrible is that we're siding, you know, I mean, Jesus is standing there watching Peter go, I don't know the guy and cussing about it. Saying, you know, I don't know him. All right, well, then that's what he's seeing here, too, because Peter's writing about the sufferings of Christ. All right. And when we do that, he sees us like Peter. I'm getting out of this. I'm going to talk my way out of it. I'm going to lie my way out of it. I'm going to, you know, present myself as righteous and da 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 da, or all of that crazy stuff. Or we're going to be with him through the sufferings of Christ. As Christ suffered, same mind, no longer. Starting today, no longer should live the rest the rest of my life, the rest of the time, to the flesh and lusts of men, see? But to the will of God. And the will of God, I think we pointed it out several times, but the will of God is what we read in the two previous scriptures that said, this is the will of God, specifically. This well-doing thing. Um... Let me give you just a hair more here then of what I wrote. First, it shows that Christ suffered. Then it states that this is a mind and that we should be armed with it. Then it states that with this mind, we no longer live to the flesh, to the lust of men. The definition of lust ties into the meaning of the will of God and well-doing. It is not general lust of the flesh, but in context of standing up for your rights, using your mouth to justify or to rail back. The lust are representative of a specific desire of the flesh to get back at someone or to show everyone you've been wrongfully judged. And then verse, we read 419 then, and maybe you didn't notice that all three verses that we read, verse 19 said, Wherefore let them suffer according to the will of God. This is the next verse after the ones we just read. 1 Peter 419, Wherefore let them that suffer, this kind of suffer, suffering, um, are according to the will of God, meaning you're with him in what this is about, commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. I don't know. Okay. Um, so here's what I, I, I need some of you to do. Uh, I mentioned this early when we started. But uh, I know I understand this, but it doesn't do any good. I mean, my heart is not just to stand up here and talk. Um, I, I trust that the Spirit of God is moving on you. But if this method of this kind of chart and this corridor thing, if that's not uh, helping or if, you, you know, and I know some of you go, well, I don't want to say that. Well, say it. My God, just say it. I'd rather hear that and and uh, be able to go back to the Lord and say, well, I messed that one up somehow, but here again, <laughs> fresh, because I know the Lord wants us all to, to see this and to be with Him. It's This is not about seeing deep things. This is strictly being with Him in the trials instead of calling on Him far away and trying to get Him to get it out. So please do that. Let me know. And I've said that a couple other times about certain other subjects and let me know. And a few of you are faithful to do that. But uh, some of you, you know, I never hear from. So I just don't know. And, um, uh, and, and if I get the inkling that, you know, really maybe we should abandon this part, then guess what? I have all the notes of what he shared with me over... I don't know, it was about five, six months period 
where I did nothing but search that book and I didn't use any other book at all. And the Spirit of God just, He wants to do that with us, <laughs> with all of us. So I'm just, um, I'm just, just feeling that if this isn't helping, let's not do it. I mean, it's, I, I, I have no particular, you know, well, I have magnets or something. <laughs> you know? I just, my, own, my only thing is I want us to be able to, to know the Lord in this way and to, and to give, you know, bring glory to Him uh, by living this way in us and to bring glory to the Father by getting this son out of us. And that's, that's the gold standard down here at the end. That's what the end is all about. So let's pray. Father, we just love you. And uh, I just love you. I just love you. And I want to know your heart um, for your people as the one that you have sharing this. And just because I know it is not good enough for me because you didn't give it to me for me. You gave it to me for them, for others. You gave it to me as a messenger. And, and I want to be the kind of messenger. <laughs> I'd be nice if you'd say, well done, thou good and faithful servant, because I know what well doing would, would mean to your heart. But I want to just um, see the seeds of this spring up in your people and then I step out of the way and the beauty of what you wanted and what you desire out of us would rise, rise out of us and just would touch your heart so deeply, touch your heart so deeply like Peter must have as he began to see how off he was and had no clue, was even rebuking Jesus, thinking that he knows what's best. And instead, you used it all so gloriously for our sakes, for my sake, for our sakes. He was, he was the original messenger, as it were, on that. So thank you, Father. Thank you. In Jesus' name.